Welcome back. The CDC today updated its guidance for masks, saying the N95 and the KN95 masks offer the best protection against COVID-19. And we hope to be joined soon by Dr. Scott Niskovich of Premier Medical Group Hawaii. Uh, the He'll be briefing situation. us on masks, as right. you can see here. We've got a bunch of them. Yeah. And what this we know is... is that the cloth masks are not. Here we go. I'm going to let him in right now. <laughs> okay. We'll see if he can hear us. Dr. Miskovich, oh, hello. We are on air right now. Can you hear us okay? <laughs> Yeah, I can hear you. I don't know. Did I sign into the wrong room? I think no, I signed into. We've been having <laughs> technical issues all evening. We apologize to our viewers as well. But you know That's what? We're okay. talking masks right now. We've got them here in front of us. So talk about this new CDC guidance. Uh, we know that it's changed. You know, it just updated in the past several months. So what are the best masks that we should be using right now? Well, the best masks right now are no question anything that is an N95. Um, and I'll take an N95 or something that's called a KN95. So those are masks that are the same type of mask we would work wear in a healthcare setting. And so you could have a prolonged exposure to COVID droplets and the new CDC studies that have just come out that show that you have two to three hours of protection if you would be exposed for a constant amount of time. So, so yeah, so the bottom line is an N95 or a KN95. The next thing is the natural surgical mask that we'll see, the blue surgical mask. We have a lot of questions about those because you gotta wear it the right way. Everybody's seen them. You gotta make sure you have it around your nose. And then the way it comes across your ears, it often leaves too little perks open on the side if you don't kind of have it fitting or if it's a little too large and those are plenty of areas for air to be coming in so but they do fare better than anything else after that then there is some question about double masking may be helpful but you know it goes right back to the beginning that n95 or kn95 is your best option and hopefully we can find them <laughs> well, I, I'm holding one of these <laughs> N95 masks in my hand right now. What makes these masks so much more effective than cloth masks? Well, the filtration, when you read that N95, it talks about the particulate matter. I mean, you can get an N99, which is like highly filtrating the, the microscopic droplets. So when you're talking about the size of the droplet that Om, um, Omicron or coronavirus would be, uh, it, it will block that size coming in. That's, that's the key. Uh, that, that's a microscopic virus particle and it will not pass through that level of um, filtration. So much different than a cloth mask. Actually, hold a cloth mask up to the up to the light, and you can see how how penetrable it is. So, how about walking outside, doctor? Do we is it necessary to wear a mask while you're outside, whether you're around people or not? Um, well, you know, with coronavirus right now, we really have a whole new uh, problem. Everybody knows how contagious it is. Everybody knows how contagious those respiratory droplets are. And um, I always like to use the analogy because I'm a visual person is think about someone vaping and everybody sees that vape smoke flying around. Well, you know, think if that's someone's breath and those are someone's droplets if they had just coughed or if they're speaking loudly or if they yell to say hi to someone um, you could be walking into those droplets now we are talking that the close contact definition which unfortunately our state is way off on this as well as cdc needs updated they're still saying 10 minutes and and uh six or 15 minutes and six feet that's ridiculous. If you see the practicality now in the field, we're seeing people 15 to 30 seconds exposure um, just in passing by. That's why we're getting such spikes in our disease. So the bottom line is uh, it could be spread outdoors. It's uh, certainly way, way, way better for you to be outdoors. And it's not as uh, much of a risk, but you got to be careful, you know, especially if you're in strangers and you don't know where you are. If you're in a crowd and you're going to be close, wear a mask. A lot of people are saying the Omicron surge has peaked or will soon peak. How do you feel about that? Um, be careful. Anybody that says that, um, do are we maybe at the peak in Zenith? Potentially. We have enough information from 
other places. I would not put Hawaii at the peak yet. We were behind places like New York uh, that, that rose up f faster than us uh, or, or um, Washington, D.C., which is going down. Great Britain, definitely. You've heard me say on the show numerous times to watch Great Britain as one of our indicators. It started to go down. But now the question we really have is, what is the downward trend? Do not just assume that it's going to be like South Africa. The likelihood is the trend could go up and it could be a slow, rocky turn down. What I can guarantee you is it will not across the country. It will vary based on the immunization rates, based on the density of the cities, based on the people wearing masks. We know how the red states, they don't agree with anything. <laughs> well, we'll talk Blue locally. We're, we're about 80 percent vaccinated here. How soon do you think it'll decline here? Um, it's going to start declining, but I would say, you know, we're, we're going to see a decline, no doubt, I think by the end of the month, it's going to be coming down. But the speed of the decline is what the question is. You know, but I do think we're on pretty good track to see the decline starting sometime before the end of this month. Yes. Well, that's good news to hear. So I want to just continue the conversation, actually switch to pediatric cases now. We know that uh, pediatric hospitalizations are up in part, across parts of the country. What have you been seeing in terms of children and COVID? Positivity with what we're seeing with our positives, very, very high in the pediatric age group. What, you know, what it really is, is the whole family's getting it. And uh, so nothing like what we're seeing now compared to the past the number of pediatric uh, uh cases that we're getting is is way off scale and um we are seeing that the kids are getting sicker they're getting more symptomatic it is more upper you know not necessarily in the chest and uh i have not seen any from our, all of the positives we have you know which are thousands upon thousands here but um that have gone in the hospital but we know they are going in the hospital and we know they spread it and uh it's very quick to be spread that's for sure through families but very high last week doctor you had some pretty strong words you said that children who are too young to give to get a vaccine that are going to school that it was grossly negligent to have that happen do you still feel that way um I still do. I just think that when you look across the country, what's going on, a lot of schools have taken um, a, a stronger role in uh, protecting the kids. You know, what did we just hear today? What did I say to you guys last week? Masks. We should have been handing out masks. We should be doing the right masks as protection. We haven't done that. And then our DOH has a nerve to say that close contact is defined as three feet and 15, uh, three, three feet with 15 minutes that the kids are really at risk. So, yeah, so I'm very concerned. I do believe it is still negligent for anybody at risk to be in, uh, in a school or in a closed environment with so many people. Okay, well, thank you so much, Dr. Scott Miskovich. Always great talking to you. Thank you so much. We thank appreciate you. your time.